one. We're the Dreadies. We're playing Dread Lore, L-O-R-E, a tabletop role-playing game system that focuses on immersive and cooperative storytelling. It is an alternative to other role-playing games, which you might have heard of. And it's really good. Say hi, everybody. Hi, hi everybody. everybody. Hi, everybody. Hello. I hate them. Them. Our current campaign Hello. is <laughs> the Red Rit. The Red no? Rit. Red Rit. Uh, imagine Detroit, 1982, where some weird things are going on, but only a few people are seeing it. Guess who those people are? Everybody who's seeing it, right? Wave your hands. Oh. A small group of people, our players, have found themselves in the middle of it, an ancient horror, the unknown, a twisted fate. Something within each of them compels them to search on for the truth, even if that means the worst. Join us as we discover the truth of the Red, Red, Red. Red. There we go. Yes, yes. Media production is by Couch Fire Media. Music is by all lowercase letters and Mr. Interrupt. Special thanks goes out to the Patreon papers, the recurring stars, Tim Roberts. Narrative NPCs, Daniel Holker. Uh, all of the descriptions and the links and all the goodness are, uh, you know, where they normally are. In the bio, in the description, on the Twitch. You can find them. I believe in you. Uh, please write a review uh, if you have bought a book on Amazon or Drive Through RPG. Uh, it is also, uh, the Dreadlord book is also available on EPUB now. Uh, and it looks pretty sexy. Uh, sign up for the The Dark newsletter and you'll get a discount on Dreadlore stuff. Uh, and then there's also a meetup called The Dreadlore Enclave if you're in Los Angeles. We stream on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard. And this is released on every podcast imaginable, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. All right. Hey, if you're watching us on uh, Twitch, you know what you should do? Hey, Drizzle, what should they do? They should so. comment in the chat mm -hmm. so we know you're there. What else should they do? Like and subscribe. And follow and all that stuff. And follow. Uh, I, I added some little bits and pieces. Uh, they're called alerts. Hopefully they're not annoying. Uh, you guys have channel points. You can use them to affect the game. If you purchase with channel points a pip, you can change something about the past something small you can also gift that pip to one of the players if you purchase a narrative point you can do the same thing except narrative points affect the present so in our last game uh lil gotham one of our uh viewers uh bought a narrative point with channel points and then was like this is going to be the name of their their squad and it was you can remind us to hydrate that can be water bourbon coffee whatever you want Okay, that's the intro. And if, you really, and if they really want to have fun, they can they can affect the game and force us to speak in funny accents. That's right. You can you can <laughs> you can you can do all of those things. Uh, let's have you guys uh, introduce yourselves, and then we'll do a little bit of a, a recap. We'll start with Ken. Uh, I am <laughs> I am uh, a journalist um, in real life. And Nord is also a journalist, but my journalism, I, I have ethics, and Nord does not. Nord is the character that I play in The Red Rit. Uh, he is searching for answers. Uh, he uh, works for a little, um, a little newspaper, kind of like the National Enquirer, and makes an okay living, uh, good enough to afford his own van and gas mileage. Uh, so he's, he's he, doing great, traveling the world. Reporting on the strange, obscure, unique, and weird. Hit up uh, Drizzle. Oh yeah, Nord also makes up enough money to buy lots of drugs, but that's a different. <laughs> <laughs> Does he buy them uh, though, or just get them? Well, well I, don't, I don't know. I, I'll I'll eventually find out because I am a private eye. <laughs> I'm Drizzle. I play Simon Vincent. He's a hard-boiled detective who uh, believes that all this stuff can be rationalized out some way. Uh, he doesn't want to believe that 
this stuff is supernatural in any possible way. But we shall see how things go. We'll do Hulker. My character is Tony Turniak. Tony is a former priest who uh, left the church of his own volition and of other people's volition as well, uh, and is now a border guard at the uh, Detroit Windsor Crossing. And uh, Tony do does not think that his time in, in seminary was uh, was wasted. I think there's something to this. To this, maybe it's n not exactly what he was uh, given in seminary, but he thinks there's something to it. He's going to find out, and probably lose his job in the process. Mm -hmm. That's Andrea you just charged your weapon <laughs> in your <laughs> in your apartment building. Um, I uh, my character is Leah Mizrahi. She is a former IDF uh, soldier who. Uh, um, you know, decided to, to move to Detroit after <clears throat> after things got a little bit hairy where she happened to live in sort of what was part of Israel at the time. And uh, yeah, she, um, for some reason, she decided to, to move to Detroit of all places with her daughter and her husband. And um, yeah, she, she kind of, uh, she, 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 she heard lots of strange stories in her time in the IDF of people seeing stuff so she's not she's pretty she's not a believer in the sense that she uh she knows it's you know she knows really what's going on but she knows that weird shit happens and you guys have a few npcs non-player characters with you uh who are they right now well, we have oh, rebecca foster ahead. yep Who's What's she look local like? Oh, lady of the night. That's all we got. <laughs> uh, I don't remember we what also she looks have like. My she, she looks, she looks like. Uh, well, the the image that we have, she's wearing uh, short shorts and a white little tank top. Yeah, she's rather oh. attractive. She's very attractive. Nord, Nord should know exactly what she looks like. I feel like Nord <laughs> yeah, is as a. Uh, quite enamored an interest with, in with her Rebecca and Foster. i think she likes him you know she might you might uh, not she might not i mean she she might think he's a he's a, a good john too i mean who knows so uh she's <clears throat> she's got dark shoulder length hair she's about average height uh for a lady maybe like five six we'll say um and uh She's not athletic, but she's she's lean um, and uh, is a handsome woman. Uh, you've seen her in a, in a variety of of dress of uh, which right now, I believe she's in a dark polka dotted like a, like a, um, almost like a flapper dress, but you know, not as 1920s about it. Uh, think of like a a more revealing Sunday dress or spring dress. It Was does it not a at all. It's a teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini that she wore for the first time today. How do you know that song? How do you not know that song? I don't know that song. I don't know that song. I didn't, I didn't sing those songs. Okay. Where I come from, there were no songs. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that's who she is. Uh, Normally, you have a uh, another NPC, Leah's daughter, who would like to describe Mariah Mizrahi. How about Holker? Yeah. Feel like I'm teaching class. Okay, students, and it'll be Holker. She is a ten-year-old girl, I believe. Yep, going on sixteen. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> who really? Uh, who uh, scared the crap out of uh, Tony one time, and uh, Tony hasn't really let it go. He kind of got her back, but, you know, <laughs> kind of scared her back, but not really. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Tends to be, uh, 
tends to have trouble uh, holding her tongue in certain situations. But I mean, what, what are you going to do? She's a kid. Yeah, she's rather precocious. Um, and another NPC that you kind of sort of have is Detective Idaway. And I'll let uh, Simon talk about him. Uh, yeah, he you've only is, seen him uh, a couple times, but yeah, he's the guy that uh, Simon used to work with in the police force. Um, when Simon took early retirement, Idaway was still on the force, and he's kind of going a little bit crazy. He has been researching these disappearances that happen um, every equinox for years and basically hired us to try and find the girl and protect this other girl, Annabelle. Yep, and uh, <laughs> this is this picture of, of Detective by the way, is perfect. Oh. That's great. Although he is African American. <laughs> but I mean, you, know, you gotta tell me these things. But you know. <laughs> I think this is the first time that he's, you've, he's a I he's think a you've seen this image before. Yeah, it's the first time I've seen it. He's a mix. Um, uh, he's he's uh, African American Caucasian. So, you know, whatever. Uh, if it's never been now, mentioned. If it's never been yeah, mentioned, never, then that's what he looks like been. now. <laughs> this is what he looks like. Yeah, the the, the flash was on bright, <laughs> and it was the winter. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> anyway, wow. I love that picture. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> of course. He's uh, got he's his g- pretzel and some donuts. Yeah, he's I mean, got the bear donuts claws. And, dude, it's fucking bear. Of he looks like he's. Made a, uh, that's a serious mustache too, man. That that it almost rivals Drizzle's mustache. It does. Uh-oh. It doesn't though. It no, doesn't. no, it doesn't. The, it doesn't at all. It's the these handlebars as opposed to these handlebars. Mm, I see. I see. Don't know if you guys knew, but Drizzle's <clears throat> like a like a beard contender. Okay. Uh, that yeah. could have been a contender. I could have been a contender. So, who's our sponsor for tonight? Our sponsor tonight is Apathy and Oh, fuck it. I feel that. Oh my god. (laughs) All right. So, uh, it's been a couple weeks since we were back. Last week we did a different setting called Into Space, where everybody played Space Marines. Uh, Andrea, we won't go too much into that. We can do it in the after hours if you're around. Um, but uh, we'll likely do that again next week when you're assuming you're not here. Uh, so we'll do a little bit of a recap. Recap time. We need recap music. Okay. Here's the recap. <clears throat> the party found themselves in a quandary when Simon spotted a cop car staked outside of Barker's Books and Oddities. Simon decided to nip things in the bud and approach the cops, because that's smart. They claimed they were looking for Nord's alias, Greg Silver. One of Nord's alias. Alii? Aliases? Aliens. Aliens. But something was unsettling about them. Inside the bookstore, Nord and Leah raid Grimwald's veritable alchemist lab, Grimwald being the proprietor. The party steals a few books and money from the cash drawer, because they're good people, before using some old-fashioned tricks to evade the staked-out detectives. Nord in his van, and the rest in the Buick. Nord smells the presence of formaldehyde inside his van. Annabelle's! Drop Annabelle as a person, by the way. Annabelle is dropped off at her house in Gross Point, and Leah entrusts her daughter with Eunice, the waitress at the fancy diner. The entire group heads to pick up Rebecca Foster with the intention to head to the Hideaway Jazz Club. They hope to find out where the Bell Grove Masquerade will be held. So a party. <laughs> Nord smells the scent of formaldehyde in the elevator. Uh, the building they're in is called The Boulevard. Uh, this is the apartment building that uh, 
Simon and Tony live in, and Rebecca as well. Rebecca and Nord get on fine, while Leah notices someone has broken into Simon's room down the hallway. Simon watches for the intruder to leave, and seeing where he's staked out, Nord, Tony, and Simon get the drop on him. It's another detective. Donna! The trio coaxes the, de the detective to give Simon back what he'd stolen from his apartment. Before driving off, the detective implies a threat. The trio return to Rebecca's room, where she and Leah are having an awkward conversation. Next on the red, red. Okay. The red, red. So now that everybody's, you know, up to speed, uh, we'll go in typical Dreadlore fashion. We'll go into the montage. You're supposed to start the game in the montage to just kind of set things up. Uh, this is soft role play. Um, so you guys are moving uh, up into the apartment in the elevator toward Rebecca Foster's, unless you want to do something else. And uh, the first encounter we're going to have is going to be with Rebecca and Leah as they're left alone in Rebecca's room. Um, so before you guys get there, we'll have that encounter. Uh, that said, kind of sort of what is the trio doing right now? And uh, you guys can role play and such. When we get up there, I'm going to go into my room and put this stuff back. Uh, he was somehow able to get into my strong safe. I, I'm going to see if he blew it open or, or how he got into it. Um, if you guys want to go to Rebecca's, that's fine. If you want to step into my apartment with me, that's fine as well. I've just got to put this stuff back and... See if maybe he got something else. Actions I'm a little long. hungry, so I could use a snack if I if you got some food in there. Uh, there's probably some bologna and bread. <laughs> Sounds great. I usually I don't fix stuff at home. You don't live in LA. <laughs> I get. Most most of the times I'm on stakeouts anyway, so I'm eating some sort of crap in my car. I noticed. Wait, hey, dude, you have no room to talk. <laughs> hey, I live in my car. That, I mean, I know that's, that's what I mean. I guess you live in your car too. I spend a lot of time in there. You get a lot done, you know. You get, you're closer to, to places. Yep, you also can get out of places quicker. Exactly. Tony, do you I live down the hall. Place? Do what? So uh, I live Tony, down the hall. Do you need to stop by your place? I'd like to, just to see, uh, see if uh, the guy that... Uh, Try to take us all out. It's still there, and maybe maybe you can try it again. Walk into a trap. That sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we should go all go in together. And make sure that the coast is clear before entering either of the apartments. Who knows what we'll run into? That's what I was hoping for. I mean, I, I'm not. Uh, not ashamed to say, I'm a little afraid to go back into my old apartment. Uh, I am a bit scared of the dark now. Uh, hard to uh, hard to blame me, I, I, I guess. Uh, but yeah, your 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 assistance would be very helpful going into uh, my apartment or anyone else's for that for that matter. Don't hey. read, don't don't read any more passages out of books. I feel like, <laughs> unless it's well, unless it's like a kid's I, book. I just, I, I don't. Maybe maybe the next maybe, given what happened uh, a couple days ago, maybe he, maybe he'll at least realize I'm serious when I shot him or whoever that was. 
Yeah, uh, Cloyce. Yeah. Yeah, Cloyce is a scary dude. I mean, he can't. It doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter what we do. We shoot him. We kill him. We run from him. I mean, I feel like you and I successfully almost ran from him <laughs> until Simon showed up. In the uh, elevator, Nord, it smells like formaldehyde. formaldehyde. Like super thick? <clears throat> yep, still. I think they might be here still, so you, you might have a point. Maybe we should check on the uh, the girls. First. We can. And then kind of go together, because those guys are tough. Voice is tough. Sounds like a plan. Anything else you guys are doing as you're you're riding up the uh, the elevator? No. Great. Inside, <clears throat> you know, the elevator is uh, maybe we'll hit third floor. Ding. As you still got to go to the fourth. Inside Rebecca Foster's apartment. Uh, Leah, the apartment looks just like all the other apartments you've been in um, in this this uh, building. Um, they're they're kind of en suites, uh, and they mirror each other, <clears throat> you know, alternating as it goes. Rebecca's is on the corner of the building, so you can hear the street down below from both sides. Uh, that said, the it act, the, the street noises act as a kind of white noise uh, to blanket the paper-thin walls, <clears throat> the sounds from the paper-thin walls of the apartment. You can hear TVs on in all directions because you're on the fourth floor. <clears throat> and uh, people shouting, you know, you smell the cooking of somebody uh, uh, burning, you know, their, their, their dinner. <clears throat> and a baby, of course, is crying somewhere. Someone's doing jumping jacks, and someone, someone else is doing something else. In this living area, uh, it's it's done up pretty nice, actually. Uh, you notice that you know the furniture and stuff. It's a little bit old timey. So remember, it's 1982. This stuff is probably from late 60s. Uh, but it's it's well dusted and that kind of stuff. Upon closer inspection, you can tell that it's not, it is hygienic. It's not particularly clean. Uh, the dust has been swept under the rug, so to speak. Um, this is a very presentable place, but it's, it's maybe a place that she doesn't, she doesn't stay in all the time. She's out and about. She's entertaining guests, we'll say, quite a bit. Um, it's all topical. But it's nice. Uh, fake plants and all these sorts of things. There's a little candy dish and there's a few uh, glasses with, um, I believe it was rum she was serving you all. Or was it gin? I think it was gin. <clears throat> uh, she'd given everybody gin and she's actually served you a gin tonic as well. It's sitting there sweating on the table as we'll say that you haven't drank any of it. She's sitting across the room diagonally from you in a uh, a little love seat. So it's it's a little bit too big for her. And we'll say that you're um, on the couch. And uh, it's really quiet other than the noises, the sounds I described. The, the boys have been gone for maybe five, six minutes. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Rebecca's avoiding eye contact. Uh, um, Leah will, uh, you know, she'll let the silence, you know, hang for for a bit, um, and then, you know, after after a little while, she'll, uh, she'll, look, you know, she'll look directly at Rebecca, and grab the uh, the gin and take a, you know, a full a full <coughs> sip of it. And you know, set it back down on the table very loudly, and say, <laughs> "So, what is your relationship with my husband?" 
<laughs> uh, this is the montage, so there's no need to bid and all that stuff. You see, you see the the slight grimace, just the creases in her, uh, in her makeup. Um, she's, I want to say, how old are you? How old is is uh, Leah? Um, if I were to guess, she is. I'd say she's probably like 35, 40, around there. <clears throat> so Rebecca is in her, as far as you can tell, middle, late 20s. Um, she might be older, but she looks mm-hmm. like, yeah, maybe she might be 30. Um, that said, you can tell uh, she she's had she's been around the block. She has a lot yeah. of experience. Um this is not her first rodeo. Maybe not the first time an angry wife has come and talked to her. Fair. As <clears throat> as she's sitting there, uh, you see the grimace appear as she happens to be drinking when you say this, and she can't say anything. Uh, very conveniently, as she kind of, hmm, hmm, hmm. um. Who's your your husband again? She takes another longer sip. Marcus? Ms. Roy? <laughs> Marcus. I I know a few marks. It's a pretty common name around here. When did you all get to the States? You- I don't think the accent is going to be terribly hard to miss. Oh, he has an accent? Oh. Well, um I I don't know. I mean maybe I've I've met him. Has he mentioned me? She looks up. You know oh. you, you note how beautiful she is in this moment. Oh come now. Don't don't play this evasive game with me. Just give it to me straight. We're not going to do... Normally, I would do a fate roll here. (laughs) 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 But we're in the montage, so we're not going to do that. Uh, She looks at you, and you see... You see her eyes kind of soften a little bit. Um, Out of game, it's usually the Arbiter's decision to stay in montage or the dread players can force going into the dread by bidding the reason for doing this is where do you want the where do you want to spend as the arbiter where do you want to spend most of the time where do you want the tension to build in the dread you're going to have a lot of tension in the montage you're not things are just moving in the montage and so sometimes it's in the players uh, best interests to stay in the montage because it's just going to kind of move forward but you don't have as much agency. If you want the agency, then you want to go to the dread. That is not to you, Andrea. That's just to the ether. Yeah. Uh, to explain how I'm running the game. <clears throat> so we're staying in the montage. Uh, her eyes kind of soften a little bit. And you see maybe her head tilt. <sighs> she sets the, the gin down kind of in her lap. This is going to need more gin. As she stands up and pours you both some, get some fresh eyes. She says, do you need some fresh eyes? I'm good, thank you. She packs her as full, and you see she maybe have, has been a bartender. Like, she makes this whole drink. She's stirring. You always stir gin. As she's stirring, she sits back down. Squeeze of lime. He's visited a couple times. Nothing Fair happened. Do I know you don't do? believe it. I know you don't believe it. So what you does he him. do when he comes and visits? Her eyes like flicker up to where the sort of the corner of the ceiling. You just happen to notice. Maybe she's thinking you're not necessarily sure. But she seems to be looking up and to the right towards the apartment building. He's come here to, I guess the easiest way to put it is get away. 
we don't really talk much. And she's sort of thinking as, uh, thinking into her drink as she stirs it. She looks back up at you. I know you know what I am or what I do. That's never happened with your husband. Seems like a, a rather frivolous way to spend money, no offense. <laughs> he doesn't pay. She kind of guffaws. So, that seems odd. Maybe he just wants a friend? You can tell Rebecca's smarter than that. <clears throat> hmm. And she's definitely perhaps being a little wants, coy. Perhaps he doesn't, perhaps he just simply doesn't want to pay. Uh, and out of game, just because an NPC tells you something doesn't mean it's the truth, by the yeah. way. <laughs> he, I guess I, I guess I should tell you, um... He doesn't want you to know. Well, obviously. <laughs> I mean, uh, like, e even even under the best of circumstances, it doesn't look good. Shall we say? Yeah. How did you find out? Uh, unfortunately, well, I guess fortunately, depending on your perspective, but uh, my daughter was a little... Uh, not exactly forthcoming, but I wheedled something out of her that perhaps she wasn't supposed to share. You see the grimace return, <clears throat> and Rebecca says something to herself under her breath, but you can't quite hear it. As she looks back up and says, well, I think I, I can tell you some. I don't know much about what's going on with him. And I don't really know if it's my place to tell you. Well, can go ahead, continue. He's scared. She looks at you quite straight, straight in the face on, on this. He's scared. He said he's being followed. And, and she looks back up towards somewhere in the ceiling over where the door is. It might draw your attention to the door and you notice how many locks she has on it. I won't lie, some, some strange things started happening after he showed up. He said some, some men were after him and someone had visited him, somebody he knew from the past. And he didn't want you or your daughter to know. The person that visited him, did it happen to be, did his name happen to be Cloyce? I don't know. He didn't say his name. He just said it had been a while. Honestly, we didn't talk much. He just kind of stayed here and she points, kind of gestures with the drink towards the door. Those locks are because of him. He, he put those on. He would stay there and sleep on the couch and she looks up at the window and stare out at the window. Strange. Uh, How long it's about that time. Start it's about that time you hear the boys get to the door. Uh, the door is locked um, as Rebecca stands up and goes over to the door. You guys are on the other side of it, unless you decided to go elsewhere. No. Uh, I don't... I don't know. Let me think. Speaking of, uh, for you all, are you going elsewhere or are you going to Rebecca's door? We're going to stop by there first, make sure they're okay. Okay. She and opens it up. To... And you are all in this uh, encounter. Hey, yo. You guys okay in here? Oh, yeah. Getting along great. She looks over your shoulder at Nord and smiles. Hey, Rebecca. How you doing? Oh, fine. Are you all leaving again? I hope I'm not. <laughs> of course we I'm are. The writing's on the wall. Oh, yeah. 
I guess we got to go to this club at some point here in a minute, but I need to I go into my pub to... <sighs> and drop this off. Well, I'll go get my things. She turns back to you, Leah. A few weeks, maybe, maybe a couple months, and you see her briskly walk walk past. Uh, sits down half of her drink. She's drained half of it. You might note that she's had three or four of these, and it doesn't seem to have affected her at all. Um, as you hear her rummaging around uh, in the back room. You guys are all there? She does. You sure about that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, do, they, do, you, do you guys leave? Well, we were checking to make sure you hadn't killed each other first. Oh, fair enough. Uh, I need to drop this stuff in my apartment real quick. And we got to check on my apartment, too. Okay, well, we will catch up with you in a moment. A few moments later, Rebecca comes out. You see, she's got this, like, uh, so she has her her black or navy um, dress on, comes up to, like, half thigh, has some, like, frills. Uh, polka dots. She's got on these laced up boots and uh, this black leather jacket. It kind of has a little bit of a punky look. Um, And uh, yeah, it'll have like a little hoodie thing on it as well. As she (laughs) a little handbag, she's like, where are we going? And you see her make to leave the the apartment. I will head out I'm just gonna drop this off real quick. I'll be back in. Oh, I've never, seconds. I've never seen your apartment. I'll, I'll follow. Okay. Yeah, let's make let's, yourself let's a home. A make tour. yourself a home. <laughs> okay. So I will go over and unlock my door. Uh. Turn on the lights and go in. All right. <clears throat> I'm going with Simon because uh, I'm hungry. <laughs> I might as well follow the follow the rest of the crew. Huh? Uh, Leah, what about you? Uh, Leah, Leah will uh, search the place. Um, <laughs> Leah will close. Well, Leah will say, "You guys have fun," and close the door. <laughs> all right, Rebecca goes with you all. Uh, Nord, she uh, lines up with you behind Simon and Tony, and you can smell the sweat off of her. Uh, she just looks up at you and breathes heavy. Does it, does it smell good? I mean, am, am I like, is it like pheromonesy kind of <laughs> like... Up, that's, that's up to you, dog. I mean, I feel like, I feel like there's a good sweat, you know? Like, when when you That's like people, stress sweat, it, man. That's not good sweat. <laughs> I mean, it, it just... Uh, it's it's one of those things. I mean, so, sometimes I think that that you know people. <laughs> oh, I mean, they, we're we're getting to a weird place, but I think that you know <laughs> there there is there is humanity was supposed to smell a little bit, and I think uh, people who are attracted to other people enjoy the the smell of those people. Sweat or not? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's entirely up to Nord. I mean, I think Nord it, would this en- is enjoy a, a good sweaty woman. <laughs> this is definitely a bit of a stress sweat. Um, yeah, she smells great. Okay. Musky. I mean, she's got a perfume and stuff like that, too. Sure, sure. All right, you guys get to uh, to Simon's. I'll, I'll comfort her and like be like, are you doing okay? Is everything yeah, going okay yeah. in there? Yeah, as she kind of nestles up to you a little bit. Maybe a little too practiced. Uh, yeah. She she I'll take it. Whisp- she whispers, "I need another drink." Mm. All right, we'll go get another drink here in a minute. You guys are made for I... each other. Yeah. <laughs> Simon, uh, actions on uh, all you guys. I open the door and I go in. You uh, do. I'll go over and turn off the TV. Uh, turn on the lights. Nord, there's, uh, like I said, there's some bologna in the fridge. Uh, should be some bread right next to the fridge. Uh, I'm going to go back into my room. I'll be right back out. Sounds good. Yep. I'll go in and start making everybody sandwiches. 
Yep, you make the sandwiches. Because we haven't eaten in a while. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> uh, what uh, about you, Tony? I'm going to look, I'm going to go in and uh, I'm going to look at the walls to see if there's uh, bloody runes strewn all over them. Nope, not at all. Nothing, huh? Oh, that's great. It's great to walk into an apartment without uh, stuff written on the wall in blood and someone trying to shoot you. Uh, Simon? <laughs> no, so great. I go into my bedroom and I shut the door behind me. Um, and I go to my secret safe. Secret safe. Uh, yeah, and I... You notice the... Uh, 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 it is shut. It is locked. Great. So my safe is uh, because the face of it would have been facing the wall. Okay. So is it is the face of it still facing the wall or has it been turned around? Yep. Like it I looks would... like it looks like it's been unadulterated. Okay. So I will turn the safe. I will turn the safe around and open it and see like I'll, well, I'll look at it and see if there are any scratch marks or anything like that on it before opening it uh, just cursory glance you don't notice any scratches or anything like that hello Corgi Andrea turned into a dog <laughs> polymorph uh, you don't notice any scratches or any damage to it however there is a fine dust on it it's a sort of a whitish violet hued powder just just barely it looks looks just like dust but it, it is out of the ordinary okay um I will sniff it and see if I know what it is you sniff Do it I'm... all right so we'll do a reaction roll uh which you okay. can do you can have in a montage because it doesn't break it because there's no bidding um so this would be uh, brawn and your uh, your action die. Brawn. Okay. Yeah. Threshold for this is three. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Two. It'll be two. Well, I got two. Hell yeah. So that is Limbo, which is a good spot to be in. Um, it's a success, but it's 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 a it's a dirty success. Yes, but situation. You are capable of doing all the things you normally are if you want to attempt to get more successes. Uh, no. Well, <clears throat> let me see here. Uh, I will bid uh, confident on my flask. Yeah. So after after I sniff it, I'm like, <laughs> and I'll take a swig. Uh, yep. So go ahead and, and uh, do that extra die. See if you get a that's D8. Clean success. Oh, yep, yeah, that's a clean success because there's one nice. success on each die. Nice. So you are not poisoned. <laughs> mm. uh, and for the record, it's actually not a poison. It's a toxin. Um, so as you sniff it, uh, immediately you realize, oh no, that should not be in my, my face. As maybe yeah. you... Uh, you you uh, rub your your nostrils and sneeze, and back away from it. Um, you do recognize the scent, the sort of caustic scent of. Um, sorry, my computer's acting up. The caustic scent of some toxin. Um, what it is, you're not really sure, but you 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 know that it's like smelling ammonia. You know that shouldn't be in your body. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and open the safe and put in, uh, put the stuff that he got from my safe back in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and notice if there is any, cause it was a couple of files. So yep. but they were the files on top. I, I look at them and make sure that that was all that he got because mm -hmm. I would know the next file down. So, uh, and then as long as that's true, I'll shut the safe, turn it back and go wash my hands. Yep. Uh, it's, it's exactly as, as you just described. Okay. Uh, he gave you back everything that he had taken. 
Okay. So I'll go back out. Uh, I'll shut the door behind me. And I'll be like, okay, I've got my stuff done here. Let me uh, top off my flask real quick. And we can go check on Tony's. How are you doing over there, Nord? I, I'm just about done with this sandwiches. You see him with a bunch of sandwiches. Oh, uh, you made some. I've been for flirting with uh, um, Rebecca. We the know whole you've time. been flirting with showing, Rebecca. Showing like uh, how, how, you how make to sandwiches? make a proper bologna sandwich. <laughs> That was, I mean, uh, yeah, it was just the right amount of crispy. Uh, the you, you know, I'm gonna do do everything I can to make this a glamorous bologna sandwich. Maybe uh, yeah, fry yeah. the bologna just a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> Simon, as you walk back in, in <laughs> Simon, you walk back in. You see that Rebecca is sitting next to the range you know, far enough away to where she's not getting burned. I'm assuming it's gas. Uh, she's sitting on the counter, um, so facing towards when you walk in, and Nord has his back to you, and um, you know, you know, he's, he's grilling some bologna. You walk in just as she has the bologna, and she's mouthing it, like miming, you know, playing with a big bologna, as she looks up and sees you and sits it down really quick. Well, we've got another Chef Boyardee here, huh? <laughs> Simon is standing... Simon, you're standing... Tony is standing awkwardly in the corner, like, looking through a cupboard. <laughs> uh, All right. You're not going to find is, anything uh, in there, Tony. This is ready. Let's eat. Hey. Well, let's well, take it I'll to go it. and head to Tony's. Sounds good. All right. In Rebecca's uh, apartment, what are you doing, Leah? Drinking. What are you doing? Uh, So Leah will go over to her unfinished glass and take a few sips. Um, And in Rebecca's glass, does she leave any liquid or she finish it up before she left? Oh, yeah. It has about half of uh, gin tonic in it. Okay. Uh, Which, if you Leah, smell, you can tell there's very, very little tonic in there. Fair. Anyway, so so Leah, Leah goes over to it and and um, pulls out the uh, the the vial of the nightshade. Yeah. <laughs> and says, hmm, "Let me think. Let me see. If I were to guess, she's probably about one twenty-five, one thirty-ish." Uh, and she will, uh, um, you know, pop pop the cork on the on the nightshade, and very carefully measure out an exact amount into the uh, into the glass, and uh, you know, grab the um, the stirring spoon and stir it in. <laughs> and if you need me to throw down for this, that's perfectly fine because I'm trying to do something very specific. <clears throat> well, so that's when you would bid and break the montage. Okay. If you want to control the scene. Uh, and have agency, that's when you want to do that. Otherwise, it's whatever the fuck I say it is. <laughs> okay, well then I'm going to go ahead and do that and be the poisoner. All right, so we're in the dread. As Leah bids poisoner. Um, all right, you will need to throw down on this because uh, okay. you're using nightshade, right? Yes. But for a very specific purpose. Um, uh, to poison Rebecca. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not trying to kill her. And uh, um, there's like, there's a lot of you know. I mean, it's it's not good for you. No, no, it's not. It's not great. I mean, well, it's not. It's not inherently bad for you. What the problem is is when you take too much nightshade. Yeah, I mean, it'll. It'll fuck you up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It it um, will cause death if you put too much in. That is true. Yes, it's very true. <clears throat> um. So, uh, let's see. Um, I'm gonna say that's obviously that's either mind or well, that's that's probably mind. Yeah. Yeah, I would say mind's um, fine. Yeah. That is three successes.
Did I tell you what the threshold was? You do not know. Okay. Um, what are you specifically trying to do? That's going to determine how difficult it no. is. Fair enough. Um, there is. So nightshade has several properties. You can, you know, in, in lower doses, you can use it for a, a pain reliever. Um, and basically, there's a there's a borderline right on that threshold between that and killing somebody, where it basically becomes a truth serum and forces somebody to tell you whatever you want to know, essentially. All right. So out of game, really quick. Do not try this at home. <laughs> this is <laughs> fantasy <laughs> land. Well, um, none so of this is true. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it at all <laughs> none of us are medical professionals <laughs> at all so this is fantasy all right just so the world knows we're not teaching them how to we make bombs clearly and truth serum anti-heroes <laughs> right <laughs> this is this is bad news bears do not do this okay also in real life you know really bad shit happens in this game we're gonna we're gonna let dice determine what happens. So, all right, PSA over with. Whew. All right. Yeah, you do that. Um, you're trying to make a truth serum out of this. Uh, you have poisoner, <clears throat> or poisoner or whatever. Um, which makes sense. So so it makes sense that that you kind of know how to use these kind of chemicals, uh, these fantasy chemicals and especially what your job was um you know in the fantasy military that we have in this game <laughs> uh so it's not a it's not an incredibly high threshold however you're doing this on the fly um you're eyeballing it so yeah you know it's 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 an exact science that you're not doing exactly. I mean, if you want me to, I could even throw in a chaos die in that too. Oh, you're definitely going to get a chaos die. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, roll roll the d6 chaos die. I'm going to give this a threshold four. Uh, it okay. is it's it's quite difficult. If you beat that, it has the effect you want. Um, the way that elixirs and such work in Dreadlore, there's always a side effect. And so what I'm doing here is. Uh, if you fail by more than two, which is a crit, then it's going to be deadly, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, if you beat the threshold of four, then there's no side effect. It's exactly what you want it to be. Otherwise, there's a degree of um, how, how hard is that side effect? And I'm going to use the book for that. Okay. So on the so cast, I'm not, I'm not just... I got five. Okay, great. So... Yeah, um, it's almost like you've done it before as you do this and tink, tink, maybe you measure exactly with like your fingernail or something. And you're like in one and two and stir it with your finger. Um, maybe do a little spritz of a lime as uh, it covers up whatever the taste is. So yeah, if, if she drinks the drink, then she's going to get... Poisoned or under the effect of this. Awesome. Great. Excellent. <laughs> uh, you guys move off to Tony's room. You are in the dread right now. Tony, 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 chameleon. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Tony, your, your room, uh, the door has a little note on it. Uh, the uh, the door is actually it looks like it's just closed you know no problem whatsoever there's a there's a there's this note kind of balanced on the doorknob uh, I look at the note <clears throat> what's the note say Nord it says um, stop by um, you weren't here so I wrote you this note I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a roommate. Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Action's on you, sir. I open the door. You do. Yeah. Your apartment is as you left it. It is a wreck. 
uh, is the bullet hole still there? Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> the apartment right. heals itself. <laughs> I uh, say, so, uh, all right, come in, guys. Um, you know, I've uh, I've been cleaning a lot. It used to be way worse. <laughs> way worse. As you guys walk in, uh, Nord, you get the sense because you've been using your 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 schnoz quite a bit. Um, for everyone, it smells like just kind of salty, like like the the ocean in here. Nord, you get the scent of. Um, uh, like a dock, like a an old fish smell just underneath, underneath uh, all the other smells. It's cold in here, like colder than it should be, kind of brisk. I check to see if the windows are are closed. They are as you left them. I would have closed them. Then they're closed. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, it smells like a uh, probably my fault. Well, uh, I'm just gonna look around a bit and uh, see if uh, old Cloys isn't uh, cloistered up in the closet, uh, and then I guess we'll be on our way. So yeah, I, I look and uh, check the bedroom and the closet and. Uh, the bathroom. As you do this, <clears throat> are you bidding anything? Or are you just kind of going in and out of the rooms and doing a quick cursory search? I'm doing a quick cursory search. Yeah, you you move around, um, you know, check the like half check under the bed, you know, look in your closets. Uh, what what uh what are the rest of you doing while he's doing this? Rebecca sitting yeah. there eating, nibbling on the sandwich. I'm gonna look at the. Uh that kitchen to see if that door was still there that was that appeared see if I can find in the photograph how Chloe's got in there yeah from the foot photograph yeah uh, as you walk in um, flip on the light it flickers a little bit it goes dark and comes back on Rebecca actually holds onto your arm and you see she she stops at the the, the threshold of the kitchen oh what was that what was that? That was creepy. Yeah, it's, it's a little creepy in here. That is for sure. As you look around, um, kind of a cramped kitchen, you see, you know, it's a shotgun style all the way in the back. You see the far wall. Uh, broom and mop and stuff kind of shoved back there. And there's a little recess, um, but you don't see any door. Can I bid um, something? You may. Uh, I'll bid snooping. I'm gonna look for like a hidden latch or like go to the back of of the where I saw the door and maybe knock on it to see if it feels solid. What um, What are you doing? She says as you walk up to <clears throat> uh, that area. There was a door knock. here. She kind of blinks at you and looks. Um. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess in some apartments there might be a connection to the other side. As you knock, was, ding, 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 ding. Uh, it it has the same feel as the rest of the walls. It does look like maybe there's something beyond it, maybe beyond the drywall. Um, it's a little bit hollow, but nothing like cavernous sounding. That said, with the bid, as you're sitting there looking around, you notice on the ground. Uh, you know, maybe there's, um, you know, in a recess of a kitchen, it's it's kind of the, the place where people just shove stuff. So, you know, like the vacuum cleaner and like a box or two and that kind of stuff. You notice that this cardboard box, maybe two or three are sitting there and the bottoms of them, uh, a few inches are completely sopping wet. And this is gross. Oh, yeah, he... He really needs to, to clean up. Was something spilled here? I mean, that's wet. It is wet. Uh, I she looks up at you. should do a better job of cleaning up. <laughs> We're not really dressed for this, are we? We need it. We got a club to go to. This is the opposite of a club. 
This is a different kind of party. This is a party that invites mold into our house. This is a party I have every day. <laughs> uh, Tony, you notice that um, those those boxes and such are, are really wet, like they've been waterlogged, uh, that it wasn't like that before. Yeah. Uh, I think... Uh, I think Cloyce was a swamp monster. I think yeah. he was on the island. I mean, he, he seems um, to just appear out of nowhere. Who's Cloyce? Uh, One of Leah's friends. A dead guy that they think they keep seeing. She looks directly Bit. at Tony and the Nord. Uh, a dead guy? Yeah. Dead. Um, I mean, the jury's is, still out. She she does a serious Mr. Spock eyebrow raise. Um. Well, I want to get out of here. <laughs> what? You mean, have you seen him? She slow turns to you. <laughs> the dead guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think... I think we'll, uh, we should probably go. Your apartment seems fine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fine, Tony. You don't bring girls here too often, do you? No, but sometimes the undead shows up. Yeah, well, let's leave. So, uh, I will go ahead and head to the door and uh, go over and knock on Rebecca's door. You do. Uh, Leah, you're sitting there having done the deed and you hear a thump, 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 thump on the door. Uh, you know, I go up and open it up. All right. It's uh, all on you guys. We're about ready to go. Are you ready? Yes, yes. Actually, I was going to go ahead and finish my drink that Rebecca was so kind to make for me. Okay. And I'll go back and sit on the couch, leaving the door open for them to come in if they want. All right. What are you all doing? Actions on you. What time is it? Uh, it is 9.20 p.m. So uh, how, how long does it take to get to this uh, jazz club that should be called the Blue Note, but it's really called the Hideaway? And can I can I drop a pip to, to make it called the... Uh, the blue note, like the secret name or something. <laughs> yep, absolutely you can. Just it is because. now it is now known as the blue note. If and, you're uh, in the know. Like those that are like, in the know. That's like yeah. the, the secret handshake thing to say to get VIP treatment. Yeah, I like that. It's the speakeasy inside the bar. Yeah, I yeah. dig that. Yeah, you just made that up. That's awesome. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, head out here in a minute. Uh, and I hand uh, Leah uh, a perfectly made bologna sandwich. Oh, uh, thank you. Rebecca's next to him eating. Uh, she's about half through hers. It's got, it's got mayonnaise on it. <laughs> oh, you don't say. Mm. And Leo like open it up and then start taking a bite of it. <laughs> yeah, it tastes it great. May not be, may not be kosher. I don't know if you do kosher or not. I think bologna I is. Also. Is it pig? Does it matter? Bologna is probably not kosher. <laughs> bologna is maybe this like kosher. Thing. You'll you'll see you'll see Leo sort of get. You know, a very serious, I mean, nothing like she, it'll, it'll disappear quickly, but she'll get a very serious look on her face and she'll say, oh, I've I've seen too much shit in my life to be much of a believer. Actually, bologna, Hebrew national kosher beef bologna is hearty for a real sandwich. There is kosher right, yeah. bologna. Oh, well, there is. Mine is yep. not. <laughs> Aha. You see, uh, it's like it, Definitely see not. little Nazi singles on uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> the bologna package. 
So, for the chat, we are not Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my baloney has a first name. It's N-A-Z-I. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's made from real Nazis. All right, yeah, made, so... Made from real Nazis. I guess that would be kosher, right? <laughs> it would, yeah. So... Maybe, maybe. Yeah. I think they had cloven feet, so maybe not. Uh, yeah, actions on you all. Uh, so... Uh, so whose car are we taking? Well, we'll probably need to take two. I can drive yeah. my Buick if we want to take either yours or... Rebecca, you don't have a car, right? Mm-mm. She finishes the sandwich. Yeah. Leah, so, Leah will say, actually, my husband's car is not too far away. Hey, so we can take mine and your husband's car if you want. Okay, easy yeah, enough. Yeah, sounds like a plan. So uh, I'm ready when you guys are, if you're ready. Rebecca, you wouldn't happen to know where my husband was was supposed to be today, do you? She uh, kind of chokes on the sandwich. She just finished. <clears throat> um, uh, I mean, he, we, I, mm, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, well. Hopefully he doesn't need to get the pack anytime soon. I happened to uh, run across the car, so I took it for myself. Oh. Well. <laughs> mm. Good. <laughs> Is she kind of, you know, Leah, sits Leah there? Will, Leah, will lean, Leah will lean forward and take a few more sips of her gin <laughs> and tonic. So, Rebecca, I assume you and Nord are willing to ride with me in my Buick. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. If it's not too much of a trouble. I think we should we should go. Even though how long did it take to get there? Leah uh Leah will actually go over to where she saw um Rebecca get the gin and tonic before. Um mm -hmm. and uh and pour herself a little it's like, oh I think I need the pregame a little bit more. Do you want some more? Uh Rebecca. So this would be a bid. That's fair enough. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, good cop. That that's my that's what I'm bidding. Okay. Normally it would be rather suspect. Um, it is. <laughs> it's an awkward situation, to be sure. Uh, it oh, could definitely be. Yeah. It could definitely be in her mind that you're tr you're going to fuck with her. You might even kill her. That said, it's a pretty good bid and it is timely done. So we're going to say that Rebecca does it. So that bid works in the situation. I think it's one of the best bids you could have. As she goes, oh, yes, please. And she comes over and slurps it down. She is poisoned. <laughs> Let's see if she makes oh. the save. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> oh. 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 yeah, she's pretty tough. Um, all right. Who wants to roll for? I'll roll for her. Uh, yeah, hey, no she, because I, I'm the one that's uh, probably... Uh, you know, that I'm trying to get in her pants, so. <laughs> All right, so, oh. <laughs> so, PSA, don't do Rape. this at home. <laughs> um, right. Uh, so, Rebecca Foster, you are going to find something out of game about her. About her. Uh, she's pretty fucking tough. She has D10s. So, it's 2D10. And her, her, uh, Bow def, which is bonus defense, is plus two. Ooh. She is quite strong with the force. Huh? That is, I got a 10 and a six. Okay, so it's three successes of so five. Uh, essentially what that does is it means that right now it doesn't have any effect on her. The thing with toxins and poisons is they're over duration and if you're in combat, then it's over like rounds, you know, however long a round is. 
for this, basically this scene, she's going to be dealing with this toxin. Um, and she's got to beat it three times to not have adverse effects. She did just beat it because the threshold for it is four. Uh, that said, she still has the other condition, which is it makes her a little bit more drunk than she would normally be. Uh, full disclosure for mechanics, it's not that she's not drunk, it's that she can deal with it because she's got really high stats for dealing with this kind of stuff. Yeah, Does, so go on. Um, yeah. With an NPC character like this, do they get anything for flair if if they roll a... Uh... Okay, I didn't know if there was some sort of like... Narrative NPC, that... narrative NPC, you, you, could, you could say they do, but in the book, no. Okay, I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, they don't, they don't, uh, their stats are similar to players, but they're, they're different quite a bit. Like they don't, they technically have abilities, but they don't have abilities like you guys. Okay. Like they, they just do their abilities. Right. And it's they usually strange. have, uh, far, far fewer. And also their abilities rarely give them bonuses. It's more like they can do a thing. And that's what, what happens. Right. So she drains this cup in front of you, Leah, there's this tight shot of you and her as you're watching her sipping, oh, you know, watching her over the rim of your glass. And she's like, glow. Oh, I'll be, no, I I'm, I'm honestly won't be that, uh, uh, I'll be very casual about it. Like I'll side eye her, you know, every now and then when I, when mm -hmm. I can tell she's not looking, <laughs> but I'm, I'm definitely not, uh, actually, if anything, after a few minutes, after she takes a drink, I'll kind of get like a little smile on her face and like quirk my eyebrow, impressed with the fact that she's, you know, hasn't hasn't shown any signs yet. Yeah. Uh, you notice there's lipstick on the glass as she sits it down, wipes it, with, wipes her her mouth with her hand, like the back of her hand. Let's go. <laughs> and there's a little of a wobble, a little bit, but she's ready to rock and roll, man. Okay. Let me uh, let me I type really quick door. that she's poisoned. Hold on. Poisoned. <laughs> With nightshade. God. That is perfect. <clears throat> All right. Uh, we will montage. Um, do you guys know where the blue note slash hideaway is? I believe we do. All right. Can we, we pull up the map? map, map, map? Right. So it's the montage. As you guys are, I'm mukbanging. <laughs> and uh, you guys are getting to uh, the blue note slash hideaway. So actions on you as to uh, how, how are you going about this and what you're specifically doing uh, and the role play that you have between each other. Go. Rebecca right, just so follows along. I hop into the car uh, and I assume that Nord and Rebecca get in with me. Uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Get, we, we get in the back seat. Do you get in, Tony, Definitely. or do you go with uh, Leia? Leia. I'm gonna get in. Uh, I, is anyone else going with Leia? Then no. I guess I'll go with Leia. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, well, it looks like I'm chauffeuring the two of you around then, and I'll start up the car and uh, start heading. She kind of giggles in the back. It's like a chauffeur service. <laughs> uh, Thank you so much, Simon. I'm gonna. And I, I know we're in the montage, but I kind of want to bid something. Well, before you do, she says. <laughs> she says you've really cleaned up the car since last time. <laughs> uh, it's. I've had more people in it recently. Oh, I bet. <laughs> no, I just keep driving. She, <laughs> she she turns to look at you, Nord. Aren't these comfortable seats? They're very comfortable. I'm glad you feel comfortable. I... For the record, we have not done anything. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> meta gaming. <laughs> that is meta gaming. For, for as much as Nord is 
is uh, kind of touching and you know feeling like I, I I haven't felt any response that Simon has taken any sort of interest. I mean, do you say that out loud? No. Then no one does it. I mean, I don't think Nord has noticed. <laughs> I mean, Nord didn't notice. Yep. That I dig Simon. It. How's that? He, he wouldn't right. have noticed because it, it's not a thing that he would do. Right. The antagonist arbiter would make you roll a reaction roll, but I don't care to do that. I sure. think it's great that you don't you don't notice um that that's an interesting trait about your character. So I'll give you a trait for okay. it. Um we'll call it we'll call it a flaw though. It'll be a flaw. Mm -hmm. Which you can decide what what it is. Didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. Oblivious. Oblivious. There you go. Yeah. 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 Well, it's it's like oblivious to thing he doesn't care about. Yep, like the forest that, for the trees kind of thing. Yeah. So when we get there, um, maybe the two of you are the more charismatic ones to try and find out where the masquerade is. Uh, I can get it out of someone, but I would do it the tougher way. Mm. Sounds like a good plan. While while uh, this conversation is going on, Nord is absolutely um, kind of touching and, and moving, doing like the sly kind of like, you know, trying to trying to seduce Rebecca. What do you bid? I bid. Uh, can I bid? No, I'm not going to bid a Uh I would like to bid a human. Because yeah. he is a human with hormones. Yeah, she's. Uh, she's. You know, I'm going to like if she if she like pushes back at all. I, I, I'll i probably ease back, but like he's just going to kind of, you know, put his arm around her and down her shoulder if. if um, she is well practiced in in this uh, sort of engagement, and uh, goes with it. Cool. There's there's uh, the there's the 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 expected amount of resistance of this sort of play. As, as up, we're talking, it. What's up, Nestal? Did you change your name? Nostalgic. Hell yeah. Yes. Uh, no, not a death sandwich. Cucumbers. Sorry, go on. As we were talking, I am going to s suggest that Simon had a good idea and then enter the conversation. I think that's appropriate, Simon. I, I think that these guys are going to smell a narc uh, from a mile away. If, if we kind of go in and stagger our way in, maybe you go in first alone. Uh, yeah. And then we'll come in just after you, after you, and then maybe have um, Leah and and uh, Tony go in maybe as a date. Um, maybe that's the thing, or or stagger stagger our entrances and and feel feel out the bar. We 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 know. Do we have a description of our contact here? Well, no, all they talked about was the lead singer, Levi. Yeah. Merc Levi. May. Oh, she's May great. I know what she looks like. She's great. She's, she's, she's really just the way she sings. You see Rebecca kind of look up. Uh, Tony. Do you know her? Would you roll me 2d10? We're going to add two to that. <clears throat> How many successes you get? Uh, I got rolled two successes because one of them was a ten. Nice. So two successes and then plus two is four. So that is limbo. <clears throat> As Rebecca looks up and 
Nord, you might notice that her eyes are a little bit watery, maybe a little bit bloodshot. As she looks up and she blinks a little and kind of sways a little bit. Kind of like a relaxes into you into your 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 arms. Yeah, I'm gonna bid addict and see if she's okay. Uh bidding addict, I mean you know she's drank a lot. And you maybe yeah. wonder how much she's drank. Maybe it's catching up with her. Um at this point it doesn't look like she hasn't exhibited any other signs than like a, maybe she's taken a downer or something. Um sure. your first inclination would not be nightshade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would imagine not. <laughs> uh but <clears throat> she's you know she's feeling something. Uh as she kind of like looks it. up at you. It's like that scene in um what is the Ben Affleck movie Girl Gone Girl? Is that what it is? You know what I'm talking about the scene? It's at the, it, it bookends the film. Anyway. Well, I'm glad she ate that uh, bologna sandwich. Yeah. She looks Probably up, she helped. goes, oh, Levi is, I don't know her, I guess. Um, but I feel like I do. I mean, I've heard her voice in my dreams. They're just, it's so haunting and but I've only seen her maybe, uh, you see her kind of furrow her brow. I don't know, a couple of times. She's not always there. And she's doing that thing where like she's talking really close to your face. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's sweating profusely. Oh, nice. And, and so I don't like, because she's continuing to sweat, I don't have any suspicion of you just Sweating, okay. Am I sweating? It looks like... Uh, are you? I don't think so. I mean, so. it's... It's uh, it's it's humid outside. It's spring. Uh, I'm wearing a suit. Yeah, Simon doesn't have any AC. Yeah, you're sweating. Okay. She's, she's, she's sweating a lot. Um, mm -hmm. You know, she's in the dress, and she's got her... Uh, well, she's got the, the, the jacket on. Okay. Maybe there's a little bit of beaded sweat on her brow. Yeah. You hot? Should we turn on the air conditioning? Yeah, I'm hot. Oh, yeah. Do you have AC burning up in here? <laughs> uh, I can turn At the least air crack the fan. windows. <laughs> I can turn the fan on high. All right. Insulting as you do on. it helps a little yeah i think this... i think this part is gonna respond a little bit more to us than than detective uh simon no i understand that's why i said that's why i said that uh but if you have any ideas please you know we'll, My we'll try to, tend to communicate be... Yeah, if you need we just, any help, if you get into a situation where you need me to come bust heads, signal yeah, me. Okay, let's hope that doesn't happen. It's just a club. I, mean, I, I know, I don't I'm expect... just saying, if if you get into a situation that a physical that could turn into a physical situation, you let me know. Sure, sure. We should be good. I don't want to. I don't want to bust any heads, but yeah, I don't want you guys to get hurt because I'm three stools down the bar. Sure. I, I'm really, I really don't want to get into any kind of fight again out there. <laughs> Have you been in a fight oh. here before? She looks up at you. Yeah, I'll be honest. The hideaway. I mean, if if you're not in with them, and you don't know their their like password or whatever, I mean they'll just throw you out. And some people don't like that. And. You know, some of the guys I'm with, they just... And she kind of just starts going on and on and on. Sure. I think we know the password. Oh, you do? Of course you do. I really like you, Nord. I don't want to yeah, hurt you. I like you. you, too. I don't yeah. want to hurt you. I don't think you will. I'm not a good person. Well, I'm not a good person either. I'm, but I'm, I'm a bad person. I just roll my eyes. We're all people. <laughs> people are people. <laughs> 
We're just people just trying to make it in this world. You see, you're kind of like, like a, ah, do you have any water? Uh, I think we've got some bourbon. Uh, I'll have some of that. Um, Simon? (laughs) Do you have anything to drink in here? Maybe, maybe water, maybe bourbon. I think she's thirsty. This is, this is the eighties. I pop up, pop up in the glove compartment and there's a bottle. In it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the eighties. It didn't matter, man. <laughs> That's right. There's no seat belts yeah. or anything. Yeah. Uh, alcohol poisoning. Here we come. There's a, there's Take a it. dare sticker on the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy on that. Uh, I give you her guys, a... Take it easy on that because you guys need to be talking to people in there. Uh, I'm just, sure, I'm sure. fine. I'm, I'm going to be great as she takes a pull from the bourbon. All right. And I will put my hand back to, to get the bottle back. You do. Yeah. I'll, Remember I'll we're in the down. dread since, uh, since Nord bid. Uh, Sorry guys. Give it back to me? Yeah, of course That's I fine. give it back to him. Okay. Then I'll All right. I don't take it. Nord is not a big drinker. He's, he's more into the organic uh the organic like cocaine organic. so in the van <laughs> i'm sorry not the van the van's uh, tucked away in leah's car so you guys go around the bend <clears throat> uh where leah had uh parked her husband's car uh this is the corolla i believe right yeah the beat up sort of rusted out corolla uh i imagine oh yeah nice picture there it is uh, so it's kind of silver and white, maybe some a little bit of a extra paint job on it. Uh, Leah, you get in. Is it a stick shift or is it a uh, manual? I'm sorry, or is it a <laughs> is it a stick or a stick? Is it a stick or automatic? Um, I'm gonna guess it'd probably be automatic. All right. So you got one of those newfangled machines, uh, you know, and yeah, you guys jump in. Of course, no seat belts. Uh. While this is technically your car, um, you don't necessarily know, Leah, what is in it. Uh, As you see, like, several receipts. They won't be credit card receipts because people really didn't use credit cards for that kind of stuff at this time. Um, So it'll be all cash receipts. Some paper bags and such uh, wadded up. The kind of paper bags you would get at a liquor store. Um, bunch of cigarette packets all over the place, that sort of thing. And the ashtray is full of uh, cigarette butts. Um, he's been smoking again. Everybody smokes. It's the 80s. Uh, in the back seat, Tony, you might, you might see just as you get in the passenger side. Um, was McDonald's was a thing in, in the early 80s, right? Yeah. Some yes, McDonald's. Some McDonald's and Wendy's packages, you know, all uh, thrown to the side. And underneath them, uh, a few hustlers. Um, Leah will actually have a look in the uh, in the glove compartment, just out of curiosity. Between Tony's legs, as you know, the glove compartment falls down and you see... Definitely a gun. There's always a gun. Yeah. There's always a gun in the glove compartment. Um, it'll be a uh, medium pistol. We'll call it. A, we'll call it a revolver. Um, six rounds and what's a good revolver to have in a glove compartment? Twenty-two. Yeah. Is there a nine millimeter revolver? Oh yeah. Yeah. So we'll do a nine millimeter. We'll do that. So it's. Uh, 2d4 plus 1 damage is what it's got on it. And Nord, will you roll me It'd 2D... actually be a uh, Could it actually be a 38 special? Yeah, sure. Be 38 then. 38 special. Uh, Nord, will you roll me 2d12 and that's how many rounds it actually has. There'll be loose rounds. So it'll be it'll be loaded and then it'll have these rounds um, total. <clears throat> it is 10 and 12 so there's 22 nice 
So you've got six rounds loaded, and then, uh, what is that? Is that 16? And then 16 loose of the 38 special variety. <clears throat> yeah, uh, well, remember... actually, yeah. Go on. Oh. Go on. Do you, do you want to use that, uh, Tony? I have my own, but I could do it. Can you okay, say that again, well, Tony? I mean, it's not, it's not mine, but it's work issued as long as I still have a job there. Uh, I figured you might need it. I have a gun already, but this is actually works out well. And she will, uh, she'll, you know, she'll um, pop open the cylinder and, you know, drop the rounds into her hand and, uh, you know, put those with the rest of them and then reach into her pocket and, uh, pull out the rune rounds and start shoving them in the cylinder and close it up. All right. Uh, just make a yeah. note that you have those in there. Just so you know, you might want to keep the these away from uh, from Mariah, and I point to the magazines. <laughs> oh, uh, well, yeah, that's true. But hopefully she won't be riding in this car. I mean, I'm not judging anymore. I'm out of that line of work. And as long as you declare them, I'll let you through in my other line of work, too. Anyways. Uh, <clears throat> as you guys are following the Buick uh, toward the hideaway. I also know where it is. Uh, so even if we get lost, uh, I, I can point us there. Yep. Remember, you guys are in the dread. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think Cloyce made my uh, apartment smell horrible. Oh? Yeah. What did it smell like? A swamp. Interesting. Yeah, he uh, oh. he went through all, he went through the whole, he went through everything. Um, next time you see him, you know, aside from killing him again, uh, tell him maybe not to do that next time. I mean, I don't think he's going to listen to any of us right now. Well, I mean, you you know him. You you you, you know him better than I do. Uh, I don't think I know him anymore. I mean, I don't think he's the same person he was when I knew him. I don't think he. I mean, he might not be the same person when I knew him. I mean, assuming that he is actually dead, I imagine he's being controlled by somebody involved with all this crap we're dealing with right now. And who do you think might be controlling all of this stuff that, that we're dealing with right now? I don't know for sure. Although that one woman we met in... Uh, uh, um, Eunice? Annabelle's apartment. Oh. Rebecca. Yes, she seems to have a bit of an attitude. I don't know. I wouldn't. It, assuming she's involved with all this, I could see her being the, uh, being uh, the one doing such things. She certainly has a bitchy attitude enough for it. She uh, also. I'm. I have. I get the impression she thinks she's superior to everyone. So. Yeah. I don't know what to say. As you guys are going, <clears throat> um, since you're in uh, Voria, uh, one of you can roll a reaction roll. This would be wits. If the other one wants to aid, you can. Um, to do this aid, you would bid something and then give the person rolling um, an aspect die. Likely your wits or your mind. So choose amongst yourself. And you don't have to aid, but one of you needs to roll. I'll roll. Since I'm driving. You don't have to. Oh. But you can't. Well, that'd be three successes anyway. Uh, Tony, are you going to aid? 
I will aid Leah? with wits. <clears throat> okay, so uh, what's your wits die? Uh, it is a D8. You get that D8. And uh, Tony, what do you bid to aid? I will bid... Uh, I will bid, uh, I'll bid local. I see, I'll, if it's, if it's, uh, if it looks like something that's, should not be there, I'll know real quick. All right. And would, would you get total? It ended up being a total of four successes. Nice. All right. So you will get a narrative point because you beat it by two. As you guys are going, uh, the Buick goes up a, fun, uh, a little bit. Leah uh, yawns wi widely. And you remember, Tony and Leah, how tired your characters are. Because it's been quite a while since you've had like a good full night's rest. As the Buick takes a, takes a left, or I'm sorry, a right, and heads down you know, one of the main streets to get to the hideaway. Leah, you happen to notice that that car that's been behind you for a while is likely following you. It's following a good block back. Um, but you know, it's 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 pretty late at night. You know, uh, the the road is slick, and um, as it has been raining in this area, this part of town, a lot of the street lights are out, so it's just rather dark, and there's cars going to and fro and such, but you've noticed this one um, one pair of headlights uh, with amber running lights behind you. It's, it's a wide set car, maybe some kind of Oldsmobile or something. Hmm. Tony, you know how to get there pretty well, do you not? Yeah, I know where it is. Okay. And then at that, Leah... Um, will basically make a hard turn onto a side street if there's one available. You do. Yeah. Uh, and as, as she as she basically gets out of direct li you know, line of sight um, from, you know, the main road, if I mean, I'm assuming there's probably buildings all around. Oh, yeah. Hey, you're you're in deep, deep ass Detroit. Okay, so as soon as soon as she can no longer see the headlights from the car behind her, she'll um, pull over, you know, and turn her headlights out. You do that. Uh, up in the Buick, you guys are going, and Simon, make a reaction roll, or you can bid. So it's a bid or a throwdown. Uh, I am going to bid on this, okay. and I'm going to bid Street Smart. Bidding street smart, um, you're checking the mirrors <clears throat> pretty often, and you note Fa! this mosquito trying to bite my nose. You note uh, Leah's headlights wink out as you you catch her quickly turn down a side street behind you um, and go out of go out of sight. A few cars are going and such. Uh, with Street Smart, you'll see maybe five, six seconds later, as you're watching, a car follows. Follows her? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, hold on, guys. Let's circle the block real quick. Uh, it is an old holds on tight to Rebecca. She holds on tight to you, but you note that she's she's a little bit limp. Um, oh my goodness! It is, it is a, an old mobile from the seventies, is what it uh, the making uh, make of the car. We'll say that it's kind of a a gray. Um, I don't. Yeah, know. nice, did, nice did picture. These, That's exactly it. Did these cars? I don't know much about the car that is currently being that I'm driving. Um, do they have like those pass through seats? 
to the trunk. You know, I don't know. I don't know uh, when the the, that was. Yeah, I don't know when that was implemented. I think uh, that be heavy. I don't think that was in the eighties. I don't think that was either. I think it probably had a bucket seat. Not a bucket seat. In the, it probably had one seat in the front and one seat in the back. Is my guess. Mm, yeah, I don't think it does. Okay. Even though they did start folding seats in the eighties, that was a thing. Yeah, I don't think it does. Okay. Yeah, we'll 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 just make the call that it doesn't. Unless chat, okay, you know. Even... Yeah, well, uh, anyway, chat Leah, says in the nineties. Um... Okay. Well, anyway, Le Leah will uh will pull out her her gun, and uh and basically flip over into the into the back seat, and it's like I might pull your gun myself if I were you. Yeah, uh, Tony, you see Leah stop the car, flip the lights off, and systematically do this like ninja roll. <laughs> as she appears with her gun up in the back seat, crouching down. And you're just kind of sitting there with your dick in your hands. Uh, I, uh, I mean, I crouch, crouch down. I uh, say, what's, you crouch down in what's the passenger going on? seat? What's We're going being on? followed. Oh. A few moments later, as she says that, the bright lights of the headlights, uh, far down the street still, pass in front of you and cast the shadow of your, your head on the uh, uh, the interior of the car. Of course, it's going everywhere, but the stark contrast as you duck down really quick. The car starts slowly moving down the way. Uh, Leah, would you like to bid anything for your maneuvering, or are you letting it up uh, to the fates? Um, I'll bid cloak and dagger. All right, go ahead and throw down. Let's Normally that would work uh, perfectly fine, unless it was difficult or, in this case, opposed. <clears throat> so that is um, two successes. All right then. <clears throat> Give me just a second. I'm gonna boot up this puffin. And roll the dice. I could use the fine function, but I'm not gonna. Doo -doo. All right, I need someone to roll me some dice. We'll oh. say, uh, no, you're involved in this scene. You can't oh. do it. Dang. I got we'll it. say, uh, yeah, we got Simon. It'd be a D10 and a D8. The bow death is plus three. Ooh. So that will be a total of five. All right. Two successes plus three. <clears throat> Rebecca, as Re you're not Rebecca, Leah, as you get your gun out, this car, this Oldsmobile, is all the way down the block. We'll say you went like a quarter of the way down this block. Maybe it's a mile long or something. Big old city block, just a gnarly longitudinal block. Um, the terrain. There's lots of cars on either side. Uh, whoa, there's a dog. There's a yeah. <laughs> uh, chain link fence with barbed wire on both sides. It's kind of an industrial uh, part of town. So behind the fences, you'll see like, you know, some machinery on either side, some storage units and um, some really, uh, what do you call them? Not low level, not section eight. What do you call it? Efficiency. Efficiency apartments and such sort of towering out here and there. Uh, there's some uh, homeless uh, shanty, like corrugated steel tents and um, uh, little huts here and there that people are squatting in this, this part of town. <clears throat> the car is moving rather slowly <clears throat> and it has one of those police lights on the side where the, the side mirror is as that spotlight <laughs> turns on this brilliantly bright light and starts looking around. Um, you'll definitely get the sense that when they get up to you, they'll likely see you. 
Uh, and if they know the make and model of your car, it's pretty obvious. <clears throat> so that's, they got five successes, you got two. Unless you can add something to that. Uh, ideas, uh, you've got proficiencies, you have ninja gear, um, including the car you could use. Uh, you've got abilities if they apply. And if all else fails, you can spend one point of breath to forego everything and you immediately go to limbo. So it's up to you. Hey, why don't you? Why don't we just uh, take off? You could also do that. Mm. Okay. Um. In that case, since I see them, you know, using the spotlight to search, do I look around? Do I see any? Um, if they're if they're out of their car, let's just leave. I know they're not. They're not out of the car. They have one of those. It sounds like they have one of those spotlights on the car. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, um, actually, Leah will, uh, I'm assuming these are one of, like, those, those old, like, roll-down windows. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's no such thing as non-roll-down windows. Okay. Uh, Leah windows. will start, uh, <laughs> Leah will start slowly rolling down the window. Back window, yeah. Um, yeah. And then, um, wait till the uh, uh till the spotlight is you know pointed in a direction away from them mm -hmm. and basically try and uh snap shoot out their uh their spotlight okay you won't be close enough yet unless you're going to do it at quite a distance so they're uh, yeah. you're about a quarter of the way so you're about a quarter mile away from them right now so you can make that shot if you wish and you gotta think that that's going to be on the other side of the car okay well, in that way, case, I will wait. You can still wait, I'll wait yeah. A minute. <clears throat> yeah, I'll wait okay. until I get a little closer. So if you notice, we're not gone to the rounds yet. It's because they haven't spotted you, no pun intended. This is all sort of just a back and Actually, forth. Actually, um, what I'll go ahead and do, since I can, since, since you know, I definitely can tell that they're pr pretty decent far away still, I will, I, I'll still wait till their spotlight is pointed another direction and then um, open up the back door that is on the passenger side okay you do and As is you... it so okay. you're on the right um, side so you're you're on the sidewalk there's a since it's detroit it's been raining there's a nice puddle right there big ass <laughs> awful puddle um and then leah will you know close the door and then go into an alley basically oh you get out of the car, the car. Yeah. Okay. Um, so while this is happening, Tony, you notice the back door open. Uh, Leah <laughs> pops out and abandons you. <laughs> 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 you see her uh, run down the uh, this this side street. There are buildings. They're set back since it's an industrial park. Um, we get out and follow her. If you've got a narrative point, you can make it to where there's buildings closer to the uh oh yeah i'll use i'll use a narrative point for that all right so you spend a narrative point meaning that this is a section where there's actually buildings right up and you can kind of break line of sight pretty fast um are you gonna bid anything when you do this or are you just kind of doing it i'll just do that for just okay that part. you just do it uh and tony what are you doing as you see leah do this i'm going to get out and follow her okay so what we're going to do here, <clears throat> you guys have a pretty good chance. I'm going to give you a, uh, a bid or a throw down. So you need one success if you throw down to evade these people seeing you because they they got five successes on your two. There's a good chance they see you. So bid or throw down and you will succeed in what you're trying to do because you had a pretty strategic way of doing it. So all you need is one success or a bid. Oh, I'll throw it down. Okay. Um, Look it up. And this would be probably Grace. Yeah, fun. And you too, Tony. Then we're going to jump over to uh, the Buick. <clears throat> so yeah, I have two successes. Yep. All right. So since it's two successes, threshold zero, you get another narrative point. 
What about you, Tony? You bidding or throwing down? I am going to. Uh, I'm going to throw down Grace. Yep. Everyone's scared of traits. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's no successes. All right. Uh, Actually, Leah, uh, since, behind since, you. Since I, well, since I, already go go, since I already got that um, that narrative point, I'll go ahead and spend it right away and say that there is a, uh, um, like, some raggedy old tarp near where we parked the car. And I'll, as I'm getting ready to go down the aisle, I'll just toss it. Oh, you know, sort of not, not all the way over the car, but kind of, like, just over the car haphazardly. Okay. <clears throat> as you use your narrative point to quickly do that, as you see that that happening, Tony is still in the car as he looks up at you, and you might question, why hasn't he moved yet? As he kind of hesitates and then gets out of the car, and Tony, what do you say to Leah since you got zero successes? Where are you going? You hear him say not loudly but it somehow echoes i'm going to try and ambush them as tony gets out sloshes through it's like he's like waiting you know like like tit deep he's like doing the fucking freestyle through you know what i'm saying like waves and shit coming over like lightning strikes big spotlight comes out there's a fucking hot air balloon my point is he gets zero successes making his, a lot of noise his stealth roll did not go well <laughs> no he like slips a little bit drops his keys picks those up <laughs> i mean you guys can stop me at any point i can keep going a dog appears and starts <laughs> barking at you <laughs> There's a bear with it, pointing. Uh, do you have anything to reroll, or...? <laughs> a limo pulls up. God steps out. Hey, <laughs> what are you two doing here? Where are you going? I'm gonna spend a, uh... I'm gonna spend a breath. Oh, okay. <clears throat> you, you can do that. None of that happens, but that's like what happens in your mind, Leah. It's like when you're looking at someone fail so badly, but then it doesn't go as bad as you think. And you wonder, how did that happen? How did the note stick on the door and fool the other detectives? You don't know. Maybe it makes you angry, but it works. (laughs) As Tony... (laughs) <laughs> scrambling out of the car <laughs> steps into the puddle <laughs> trips on a rock face plants on the sidewalk as you crouch down the spotlight over top of you all and you're able <laughs> to get uh, into the alleyway at the Buick what y'all doing? uh the minute that the first right I can make, I'm going to take because I'm going to try to circle the block and stop before the road that I saw them turn on. Yeah. Does, um, since it's go on. Oh, I was going to say the street smart still. Yeah. Street smart. So that was, that was really so, good. So I knew what street she turned down. And so I'm going to make a right and come back that way. But I'm not going to go down that street. I'm going to stop right before it. Special thanks to Patreon patrons. If you want to join the Patreon, join it. It's Dreadlore. Uh, it will help us in our filmmaking uh, ideas. It will help us in uh, making these podcasts. And all that good stuff. Okay, so they are Tim Roberts and Mr. Daniel Holker. Thank you very much. Media production is by Couch Fire Media. If you need some media production, check out Couch Fire Media. I should say www.couchfiremedia.com. Uh, music is by all lowercase letters, which you can find on everywhere. If you're doing your TikToks, if you're doing your Instagrams, check out all lowercase letters. Good shit. Uh, also, your interrupt. We're going to be here back here. Monday, 
7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Next week, we will likely do our uh, <clears throat> Into Space saga. Into so the near future. Space. Uh, it's basically Starship Troopers or Aliens. It's going to be a lot of fun. We might have a guest star. Um, but check us out then. If you want to do the podcast, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays, uh, Dreadlore or The Red Writ, either one. Please like, subscribe, follow, do all the free stuff. Um, all of that absolutely fucking helps us um, and gets this word out so that, you know, we can make something even bigger and better out of this. Um, yes, that's what we got. Great. Okay. Anything else? Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. See, you, see you after hours. How, how we'll quick be, are we coming back for after hours? We'll be on the after hours in 15 minutes. Okay. 15 or 10. Minutes. Uh. We're, we are going to cut the stream, but we'll be right yep. back. Yeah, we'll be yeah. back. Later, guys. Yeah, Drizzle, Drizzle, it's up. Uh, Bye, Hulker. Yeah, Drizzle, it is uh, up to you, sir. How long?